Section 1. You will hear a woman talking on the phone to a furniture company. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good afternoon, KT Furniture. Can I help you? Oh, uh, hello. Yes, um... I'm setting up a new office and I don't have internet access yet, but I'd like to place an order for some furniture. That's fine. You can do it over the phone and I can fill in the form for you this end. Oh, great. Thanks. I just need to take a few customer details first, if that's OK. Yes, fine. Uh, what name is it? My name? Yes. Oh, it's Sue Brown. Uh, Sue Brown. Thanks. The woman's name is Sue Brown, so Sue Brown has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon, KT Furniture. Can I help you? Oh, uh, hello. Yes. Um, I'm setting up a new office and I don't have internet access yet, but I'd like to place an order for some furniture. That's fine. You can do it over the phone and I can fill in the form for you this end. Oh, great. Thanks. I just need to take a few customer details first, if that's OK. Yes, fine. Uh, what name is it? My name? Yes. Oh, it's Sue Brown. Uh, Sue Brown. Thanks. And what's the name of your company, Miss Brown? It's a clothing company. Uh, it's called Dress Your Best. OK, I'll just note that down. Dress for best. No, your best. Oh, right. Got it. So you make smart clothes? Yes, formal dress for weddings and special occasions. We also repair and alter clothes. I see. And where are you located? What's your postal address? Right. Well, we're on Kirby Trading Estate. Kirby. How do you spell that? It's K-I-R-B-Y. Oh, I know that area. It's New Hampton Road, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Number 210 in South Down. OK. And can I have a contact number for our delivery man? Sure. It's probably best if I give you my mobile number. OK. The number's 09356 788 545. OK. Double seven eight. No, seven double eight five four five. Oh. Okay, that's great. Now, just a couple more questions before I take your order. Fine. We have two delivery dates this month, and you should be able to have either. When are they? Well, there's one on the 16th of the month, but there's a charge of $40 for that one. Oh, that's a lot. Mm. Or there's option two, which is the end of the month. I'll have to confirm the date later, and that's a free delivery. I'll take option two, thanks. I don't want to pay a charge. OK. I'll note down no charge. We haven't organised the office yet, so there should be plenty of time. Mm -hmm. And lastly, you don't have an account with us, so how would you like to pay? Oh, I'll pay by credit card. OK. Will that be Visa? Is American Express OK? 
Absolutely fine. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. So, what would you like to order? Well, I've been looking in your catalogue and you have some office chairs that look very comfortable for our type of work. Is there an item code? Yes, it's ASP23. Uh, OK, those chairs come in pink white and black yes the pink looks nice but i think the darker color is better for us you can see light materials on it more easily <laughs> that's true we'll have five of those i think okay i've got that anything else do you have any striped mats i'm sorry not at the moment they're out of stock we should have some in next month never mind um well, um, I'd also like two of your glass desks. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? Yes. You seem to have two sizes. Basically, large or small. I think the code for the small ones is... I think we'll have the large ones. The code here is TG586. OK. So, that's two glass desks. Any lamps for those? No, we have to get special lamps for our work. Oh, I see. Do you have another supplier for those? Yes. Um, we do need some furniture for our customers, though. OK, for a waiting area or something? Well, we have to discuss the work with them, so we need a nice sofa. Something soft and... I thought leather. Ah, yes, a good choice. There's a three-seater here... DFD44. That seems to be in red, cream or chocolate brown. Yes, it does come in yellow as well. Yellow? Hmm. I'd thought of red, but that sounds lively. Yes, I'll have that colour. I think brown's a bit too dull and cream shows the dirt too much. Yeah, you're right. Anything else? A coffee table, perhaps? Yes, I think so. Maybe TX22, the silver one? A very good choice. Well, that's it, I think. OK, I'll just add that up for you and then take your credit card details. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Track 32. Practice test. Listening. Section 2. You will hear someone talking about a wildlife park. Before you listen, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning, everyone. I'm a keeper here at Arana Wildlife Park, and that means that my job is to look after some of the animals that we have here. First, let me tell you a bit about us. Um, the word Arana means welcome in the local Māori language, and we are very pleased to see you all here. Oh. <laughs> As you probably know, we're run by a charity, and we specialise in endangered species of animals, birds and reptiles. The park grounds cover 80 hectares of land, and we have 400 animals altogether from 70 different species. So that you can see the animals in their natural environment, we've built streams and banks to separate you from the animals and make sure your trip around the park is safe. Oh. <laughs> Our animals come mainly from here, New Zealand, and from Australia, Africa and South America. There are a lot of animals to see and quite a number of things you can do here, so let me tell you about a few of the exciting encounters before you decide where to go. <clears throat> One of our most popular animals is a type of giraffe called a Rothschild. It's easy to spot. It has three horns rather than the usual two. Oh. Giraffes are amazing animals close up, and you have an opportunity to hand feed them here at the park at 12 noon or 3 in the afternoon. This is one of the most popular activities and will be one that you'll never forget. In fact, we believe hands-on education is very important, so you can touch or pat a variety of friendly animals, such as cows and goats, at the farmyard. This experience goes on all day and is designed to help children take an interest in animals and their environment. I can assure you it's not at all dangerous. <laughs> Another exciting activity for visitors is watching some of our big cats reach speeds of up to 70 kilometres per hour during their exercise run. The cheetah is the fastest land mammal and this event takes place at 3.40 every day. You can watch them go down their paddock in under 30 seconds. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. So, here's a plan of the park. As you can see, we're here at the main entrance and there's an information centre to your right. Now, it's quite easy to get around the park. We have daily guided walkabout tours which let you get up close to the animals. Or, if you prefer to be at a distance, you can take the safari bus and drive around with a wildlife expert. If you decide to take the walkabout tour, it leaves at 10.45, that's in just under an hour, from the meerkats enclosure next to us. From there, the walk passes the adventure playground and the otters in the first enclosure, and then arrives at the New Zealand birds area in the next enclosure, just in time to see them being fed. Then you go on to the reptile house, and the tigers, and the rest of the animals. Alternatively, you can wait until the afternoon walk. There are plenty of other things to see in the morning. One of these is the African village. Just turn to your right from the main entrance, walk past the first bus stop, and it's just before the African wild dogs enclosure. It's a wonderful, colourful experience. You can also go to the shop and buy your souvenirs there. We have beautiful soft toys, giraffe and zebra, for children, 
and a whole range of T-shirts, hats, and skincare products with an African theme. After that, why not have lunch in the picnic area on the far eastern side of the park? I'd recommend this because while you're eating, you might catch sight of the ostriches on one side of you or buffalo on the other. For the afternoon walkabout tour, you'll need to find your own way to the African lion habitat, which is on the west side of the park, just past the conservation centre. To join the tour, you actually go past the lion habitat. You'll see two bus stops. Keep walking, and the meeting place is about half a kilometre after the second one. If you've gone past the zebra, you've gone too far. For those of you who would prefer to travel on the safari bus, this runs from 10:30 to 4 p.m. There are stations throughout the park, but the first one is at Jomo's Cafe, which is directly opposite where we're standing. Go straight ahead, and it's just in front of the giraffes. There are various feeding times for the animals, and the bus stops in time for all of these. So let me just give you some safety guidelines. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. You'll hear two students talking about different aspects of their university. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Great party last night. You should have come. But anyway, so what have we got to do here? We are supposed to fill this form in by ourselves, but I'm sure it's okay if we chat about it first, don't you think? Yeah, sure. So. There are ten questions, and we've got to tick numbers one to five for each question. Five means really good. One is bad. Question number one: Was the course well organized? We'll give that a five. Agree? Yep. No question about that. What does question two mean, though? Was the teacher flexible? Is it good to be flexible? Well, that means. Was the teacher very strict, or maybe she gave you more time to complete your assignment? Things like that. So for that question, we should give her a five. She always gave us an extra day, didn't she? And she wanted to know our opinions on things. We had great discussions. Fair enough. What about this one? Was the teacher friendly and encouraging? I'm not sure about that. She was friendly to some students, but I think she had a problem with Mike and Alex, who were usually late. She did get a bit irritated with them sometimes. Yeah, we weren't too happy about them either, though. I know it was a bit early, with classes starting at eight thirty, but you choose if you want to sign up to them or not, so that's no excuse really. Yeah. They could have taken the evening classes if they didn't want to wake up early in the morning. Now, what about these questions on the course books? Look, the business studies book was interesting, but I thought the human behavior one was boring. Really? That's the one I liked the most. Perhaps because I want to study psychology. You want to become master of the universe, managing a huge multinational company, don't you? There's nothing wrong with being ambitious, you know. 
the best laid plans of mice and men. What's that? Some sort of quote? Stop being so literary. Let's get on with question five. Did you find the campus library a useful resource? Well, most of the books I wanted had already been taken out. But the internet access was definitely useful. Let's give that a four. Okay, and the staff there were always friendly and helpful. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, what's this? You know, they keep going on at us about how we don't use the off-campus library enough. I suppose this question is to test if we know where things are there. So, here's a plan of the library. You use it more than me. I've only been there once, actually. You tell me. Right. So as you go in, the librarian's desk is on your right. Directly opposite is the section for new publications, new books the college has acquired. Some of them are actually written by our own teachers, interestingly enough. Then there's lots of seating and the computers. Behind that, we've got the periodicals, newspapers and magazines. And that's before the reference section, you know, with the books you can't take out. Dictionaries and encyclopedias? That sort of stuff. Now, I do know where the management section is. It's right at the end on the left, isn't it? Just before the stairs up to the lecture theater. Uh, no. Sorry. Management and business studies, along with marketing, are all, as you said, at the back, but on the right. Oh, so what's on the left, then? That's the fiction section, or literature. Now, if you want to photocopy something, where do you go? I think I remember. Isn't it one of the rooms after the entrance on the right? Yeah. It's between the multimedia room and the seminar room. They're all behind the librarian's desk. What about the toilets? For those, you have to go downstairs. That's where the computer studies section is, too, for some reason. Let's get on with the next question. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Track 23. Section 4. You will hear a woman talking on the radio about things for children to do during the school holidays. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. The school holidays. The school holidays are fast approaching and I'm sure all of you parents out there are worried about how to occupy your children. Well, I have a few tips that may help keep your children entertained without spending large amounts of money. One of our biggest problems is that today's children often do not have the type of hobby that was familiar in the past, such as making their own toys. Instead, they rely on sophisticated video games to keep them amused. But children also like to feel needed, so why not give them jobs to do around the house? You may be surprised how much they will enjoy simple tasks such as washing your car. 
Another idea is to use this time to develop their cooking skills. Food is something we all enjoy, so why not get them to prepare some simple dishes in the kitchen? Learning to cook is a useful life skill for children to learn, and it can also keep them happy for several hours. Children also love doing arts and crafts, so why not give them the task of making presents for upcoming birthdays or celebrations? Not only will they enjoy making them, but you'll also save some money, and the family or friends who receive the gifts are sure to be delighted. A great idea to get children out of the house is to find out about how they can help in your local community. Perhaps there is a home for the elderly nearby. They are sure to welcome a visit from young people. Even a few minutes a week can brighten their day. Of course, younger children cannot do these things for very long, but older ones may find that there are ongoing projects around your neighbourhood that they can help with. These are just a few ideas. But I'm sure you can think of many more. If not, there are plenty of places to look for other suggestions. Nowadays, the first place people seem to look is the internet, which can be a good source of information. However, it does have its limits because ideas suitable for children living in the city may not translate well for children in rural areas. So don't overlook your library. These are often filled with great ideas targeted at children in your specific area. There are a few key points to remember, however. One of the most important things is to keep your children active; otherwise, they will be sure to get bored. Also, remember that although children can be very independent, even from nine or ten years old, you should still be there to take care of them up to the age of twelve. So don't be tempted to let older children babysit their younger siblings. This should only be done by an adult.